Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well on this most unorthodox of Good Fridays. During my study this morning, I was reflecting on this day and the meaning of Good Friday, and I'm sure many people around the world are met with a bit of confusion when it comes to Good Friday. After all, this is the day when Christianity commemorates the crucifixion of Jesus, and to call it Good Friday seems like a an odd choice of words, to say the very least, to commemorate the day in which the Son of God was publicly humiliated and then killed. A day that was decidedly not a pleasant day for anyone who was involved. But something that I do find to be not only intriguing but inspiring is the purpose behind it which we call today Good Friday. And it doesn't signify the events of this day, the events being commemorated on this day as being pleasant events, but signifying a change in the direction of history toward that which is good. I guess you could suffice it to say that Good Friday commemorates a cosmic course correction in a righteous and virtuous direction. So, you can go back in the Bible, back to the beginning of Genesis, and read about Adam and Eve, and about how when they ate the fruit, things took a turn for the worse. This act signifying how human will diverted from God's will and introduced discord into creation. And the pages that follow throughout the Bible can be thought of in one form or another as a journey of God and his people trying to regain the harmony that was lost in Eden. And we can look around us and see evidence today. The lack of harmony is all around us. People act with hostility against each other, often with obscure or far-fetched justification. We care more about securing control than enunciating truth. Our self-identity finds expression in what we oppose. It seems almost as if we long to fight. To fight for what is good, to fight for what is right, or to fight for what is true. We are no different than those during the time of Jesus in this regard. In Mark 15, when presented with the one who was actually good and right and true, they shouted, crucify him, because he wouldn't fight the way they thought was best. When given a choice between the Son of God or a radical resistance fighter, they chose the resistance fighter, Barabbas. In our ongoing quest to find a better world, to build a more virtuous world, we have to be mindful that Jesus died to show us a better way to live. T today, marks the day when history turned toward reconciliation, when people can be reconciled to God through repentance and reconciled to each other through forgiveness. So while we're going about this, and this is not something that is unique to only people with incredible spiritual insight or, you know, mystics or anything like that, everybody on the face of the earth knows that the discord within our reality, the discord within our world, is out of place. We can look and see that things shouldn't be as saturated with animosity and saturated with destructive conflict as they are. We can look around and see that the appropriate way of things is for people and every aspect of creation to relate to one, to relate to one another, to relate to each other, in a positive way, in a way that builds things up. And today signifies a day when Christ came and made that vision reality. He showed us that harmony will never be generated through violence, in the same way that love can never be generated through bitterness. Today marks the day when Jesus looked out 
at the people who had just driven nails through his body and said, forgive them. When we think about the crucifixion, we know that it was a terrible event. We know that having nails go through your feet and hands must be extraordinarily painful and that the agony on that day is something that that escapes us either through the haze of antiquity or the religious element of it being a spiritual sort of thing in which God reconciled a sinful humanity to himself but the reality that Jesus felt all the pain and still looked out at the people who had just done that to him and said, forgive them. We're comfortable with this because we're on the receiving end of this radical grace. But what would it look like if today, to all those causing you harm, you were to be the one extending this radical grace. So we'll leave you with this simple blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up its countenance upon you and grant you his peace today and each day. Amen.